Hello! Welcome to episode 114 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 1st of May. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making since then. Um, so today I have some knitting. I have some sewing which includes some embroidery, some hand stitching and also some dressmaking. I have a couple of confessions. <laughs> I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread, I have a gadget and also I have some information on my shop update which is this evening at 7pm um, but I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my handmade project bags, hand dyed yarns, stitch markers, um, higher higher knitting needles and accessories and also fabrics. Um, we have a couple of make-alongs going on at the moment. So first of all, we have the What A Lot Of Potter Gal, which I'm hosting with the lovely Becky from the Back To Blighty podcast. And we're knitting anything from this book, um, Harry Potter Knitting Magic. Originally, we were going to stop the cal at the end of March. No, not March, April. <laughs> But we've decided to extend it till the end of May, so you've still got plenty of time to knit some lovely things out of this book. And I think we had quite a few people that were knitting big projects that hadn't quite finished yet, so it gives you guys the opportunity to finish yours off. So I've got the discussion thread in my Ravelry group, and Becky's got the finished objects thread over in her Ravelry group. So links are in the down bar to those as well. But do come and join in, or even if you're not joining in, come and have a look um, and see what people are making. It's really lovely to see everyone joining in making things. Um, we also have the spring shawl along. So it's basically any shawl or scarf pattern um, that you would like to knit or you finish knitting. So anything under 50% that you've started before, that's fine to join in with. And it's just nice to see what everyone's picking up really. Um, that will run till the end of June. So you still have plenty of time to come and join in with that one. Um, later on in the year, I think starting on the 1st of June, I'll have a sock along, a summer sock along. So watch out for that too. So let's get on with the knitting bit. Um, I have blocked my Pure Joy shawl. So the Pure Joy shawl is a lovely pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And I showed you that I'd finished doing the knitting part last week. Um, but I've blocked it out now so it's all nice and neat. So I ended up using um, just over a skein of my merino nylon yarn for this main part of the shawl. And this is knitted in my own hand dyed Tell It To My Heart colourway, this one here. And I actually used about between 5 and 10 grams over the amount um, that I had in one skein. So if you have, um, if you are going to knit this shawl, do make sure that you've got perhaps a little bit extra than um, the normal um, skein size um, to make sure that you've got plenty to do that. Or just, you could just start um, the next section a bit e earlier, I suppose. You could just have to be a bit careful with your yarn management. I had 20 grams left um, of the other colourway I used for the edge, which was actually a lot less than I thought I'd have. And this one is my Love Shack colourway. And um, the whole shawl is knitted in a merino nylon base. And there's 425 metres to a skein. So it's a sort of standard um, skein size. So I just wanted to warn you that... Um, just make sure that perhaps you've got a little extra mini if you're if you want to make sure you stick exactly to the pattern but I do love this um, it's a really nice long crescent shaped shawl um, just how I like it really and I'll try and show you what it look like the way I like to wear mine Ta -da! There we go, so it's got some nice long ends, so that in the wind they don't, well they're not so likely to blow away. Um, you can see quite a lot of the colour on the outside of the shawl, more than the, the rest actually, the way I've got it on now. But you can see those beautiful eyelets that run down the length there. So there we go, that's a finished shawl, finished object. I'm going to take this off because it is a little bit hot in this craft room today. Um, 
I think I've told you everything about it. I did stick to the same needle size that he had suggested. Um, just the one thing there was that I'd run out of the first um, skein of yarn. So I suppose if you did have um, yarns that were in sort of 50, 60 gram balls, if you got three, then you'd have loads of yarn left over. So I have another finished object to show you, but it is a bit of a cheat <laughs> because my lovely mother-in-law knit this because um, obviously we're in lockdown, we have to sort of stay in. So uh, we've been dropping off um, things over at Adam's mum and dad's house and I've been dropping off some projects for um, Liz to get on with and she's finished this this week. Isn't it gorgeous? So this is the Emiliana Shaw by Lisa Haynes. Um, and I actually had this in the project bag for absolutely ages. Um, I'd started knitting in this dark grey. Um, and the way I knit is that I actually look back at the rows before to work out what I've got to do next, if that makes sense, rather than reading every row of the pattern all the time which is probably a bit naughty really so because there's some slip stitches I found it really hard to see in this darker yarn so I ended up ripping it back and getting cross with it and never picking it up again <laughs> so I thought this would be an ideal thing for me to give to Liz to do because it's a relatively simple pattern this um sort of this isn't proper color work it's just slip stitches which is really effective though love it um and it's a really nice long shawl actually and it's knitted out of the most gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, it's basically a really soft baby alpaca with a little bit of nylon, I think. So here's the label. It's Juniper Moon Farm, Harriet Fine, and it's a baby alpaca blended with nylon for durability. So it's 75% alpaca and 25% polyamide. So that's the label. And there's um, 420 meters in the 100 gram skein and basically there was about 18 grams left of this darker shade and actually she used up every little scrap of the lighter one which is lovely I do like the idea of using up um, yarn rather than having lots left over from projects um, so that was really good um, the Oh, it's so so soft and I've actually blocked it as well since she, she um, gave it back to us and I think that it's absolutely beautiful shape I'm going to try it on actually I haven't actually tried this on yet so this is going to be a bit of a treat oh my goodness so soft and you can see that lovely pattern there I should probably pull that down a bit so that you can see the pattern a little bit more but I love it really nice long ends so that they don't fly off I could probably do it a bit neater if I was in the mirror properly but there we go lovely <laughs> thank you Liz so that's another sort of cheat finish object <laughs> um, to show you and it also means that I've got a project bag that is now empty instead of having things sort of waiting <laughs> to be started. So that was really quick as well. So the next I've got to show you is a work in progress and it is my transportation scarf. So I too, Becky, have a Marauder's Map bag. <laughs> because <laughs> if you're knitting Harry Potter projects, you have to have a Harry Potter project bag. And it's my transportation scarf out of the Harry Potter Knitting Magic book that I showed you before. I haven't actually worked on this very much. Um, so I think I'd got to about there the last time I'd spoken to you about it. So I've done um, one complete repeat of the pattern, which is that much. And I've got three in total to do. So I'm on the second repeat and I'm about, I don't know, a quarter of the way through well maybe a bit more than a quarter of the platform nine and three quarters um little logo so it's knitted in uh, color work most of it's all in two colors on each row well all of it's in two colors on each row and you just end up swapping out some of the yarns um, and you can see inside that I've got all the um, floats uh, inside the tube and it's knitted in a tube so I'm not too worried about them snagging on anything but I am um, sort of making sure that I catch the yarn every five stitches anyway just because that's a habit I suppose. It's knitted in Aran weight yarn and I've used my own um, Aran weight merino 
base to knit this and it's very very squishy and very very soft um the colorways that i'm using are um purple rain for the bus um ordinary world for this gray one this yellow is walking on sunshine and the sort of navy blue is because the night um i have at the moment i'm only on my second skein of the gray ordinary will for the background and i think the pattern stated that you needed five skeins and i'm already nearly through the second repeat so i don't think i'm going to need five skeins i think i'm going to end up i reckon i'll do it in four or even less we shall see i'm getting a little bit low on purple rain which is for the um the bus so but then i then again i've only got one more bus logo to do anyway so i'll, I'll probably be okay and i've got plenty of the other ones left over so that's going lovely i was finding that um i think it's probably because i've been doing quite a bit of embroidery the last week that when i picked this up that my hands were really aching working on a color work with um aaron weight yarn as well so i didn't do too much on this this week for that reason really just because I've been doing way too much handwork with um, embroidery and hand stitching hexagons together. Well, not all hexagons, but I'll show you in a bit anyway. I'm in a very waffly mood today. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so that's my first work in progress. I've also been working on my jigsaw puzzle shawl. So this is a Stephen West pattern and it looks a bit crazy. <laughs> So far I've made this weird shape but I just love um, Stephen's patterns because you just you're excited to get onto the next bit. So the first bit I did was this one here that's one this little triangle two three is this strip up the side four is here and then I'm on little section five. Um, I'm going to try and tell you all the colourways now. This one is come on Eileen. Um, this one is nothing's going to stop us now this one is rock me amadeus this one is holding out for a hero and this one is i think we're alone now I'll try and get a bit of a closer look at these yarns in the camera hopefully you can see that a bit better <laughs> i've got yarns everywhere so this is knitted actually with four ply yarn but with it knitted double and Stephen does suggest that you knit um you mile colors together but at the moment i've decided just to knit the colors by themselves um but then when i start to do more sections i can then mix them together just so that i've got more different colors um but that's how i'm getting on so far and i'm really enjoying it and it's so so super squishy i absolutely love knitting on this Hence the reason I haven't picked up my Gwanwin um, sweater or my other shawls that I've been knitting on. <laughs> but I've done that much and I, th I think I can show you the schematic because it is on the um, pattern page anyway. So this is the schematic diagram of what the shawl will look like. So I've done section one, section two, section three, section four and then I'm on this section here. Um, so I've done sort of that much so I'm not even I'm probably about a quarter of the way through the main body of the shawl so um, I will have a very big and squishy shawl um, after I finished it so all the pattern uh, links and the yarn links will be in the down bar as well if you want to find those out but basically all the yarns that i'm using are in my um the colorways are in mini skein set four with the addition of common eileen anyway but i'm only going to tell you what yarns i've used already rather than going through the eight colorways that i'm using for that project so my last knitting project is a pair of socks and it's a lovely little mini set that i got from ducky darlings and there was one two three four five um little minis in all the star trek colors and i thought i'd knit a pair of socks for adam in them um so it's a merino nylon base with some little neps in there and i had a very important discussion with adam about which colors and what order they've got to be in <laughs> <laughs> and he decided that engineering needed to be above um, medical and I thought well I'll put a stripe of the cream base underneath that um, 
and he, I think I think he said it was supposed to represent the the ship I think of this colour and then I'm doing the heel flap in the black colour way I've put a couple of the rows of the black between the other colours as well because I think that looks good and I'm going to do some different striping down the foot of the sock so you can see I've just done um nearly all the heel flap I'm nearly there I think so I'm getting on with those nicely um so that's my socks and I've got some sewing to show you now so first of all on my list I've got to show you is my Nikki Franklin embroidery so I got a kit from the stitchery which is supposed to look like this which is absolutely gorgeous and it came with the threads and the material which was printed on so I could see where to stitch and I've got quite a long way into doing all of my um, little French knots there so there are three colours of French knots that you can add and I've now added some each of all of the colours there we go I think you can see it a bit better there so I've added a little bit each of all of the colours but I've need to um, blend the edges of the tree to make it look a little bit more sort of tree shaped natural shaped um, and I need to do a little bit of stitching down the bottom here but I'm loving doing all these little French knots got quite a bit done there anyway so maybe next week it might be nearly finished um, and then I'm looking online for a lovely little frame to put it in I think about six inches around the edge and I'm looking for like a nice big chunky frame so that I can put it on my living room wall I picked this pattern specifically because I thought that'd go lovely with our living room um, so that's that one Oh, I should say that this little needle minder is from Chapel View Crafts and it's absolutely gorgeous. There is some really detailed um, bread, croissants and a hot cross bun there. And I bought a few of those a couple of episodes ago, different ones. Um, and they're absolutely lovely to work with. So thank you, Cheryl. So I have another sewing project to show you. Um, so this is made from a pattern from the vintage sewing box which is Emma Jones um, and she's got some lovely little patterns and this one is actually free so most of this is sort of following Emma's pattern in that you've got a little cluster of one inch hexagons on the front um, with the stitching around the outside um, but I've modified it slightly by adding some hexagons in a different shape on the back but still following the same principle and then on the inside um, I've added the pages that she suggested with felt but I've then stitched the type of needle so I've put my machine needles in here um, so this one says Microtex and then I've got eight 10 12 and 14 so when I've got needles that I'm not using I'll pop them in this little booklet um, I have universal needles so again I've got the four sizes that I generally use mostly at the top uh, at the bottom of the page I have top stitch and quilting needles and I have ballpoint and stretch ones there it is squirrely writing because it is my own handwriting that I've just stitched over and because I've done embroidery on the pages I then needed to stitch some of the pages together um, so that you couldn't see the stitches on the back of the felt and then I stitched um, some of the pages to the cover as well so again just so you covered up the stitching on the back um, of the embroidery and I've got six pages there with the needles I use the most and that is just going to be really handy to pop next to my sewing machine so that I can um, store needles that have been used but I've still got some life in them so there we go so Emma from the Vintage Sewing Box does some other lovely pieces um, and she's got a pattern up at the moment which is for like a big um, storage case with all hexagons on the front to put all your sort of English paper piece in bits and bobs. There's a zip on one side and then pockets all in the other side um, so you can keep everything together and she's also got in the works a little um, box which has got hexagons on as well so I think um, I'd love to have a go at that um, so do go and have a look at her website she's got some lovely things and like I say the pattern for this is free um, but I did make a few modifications to it and I think I'm going to make another one for my hand sewing needles as well 
So I have my dressmaking bit next. So Barbara, would you like to come over and give me a hand? Thank you very much indeed, Barbara. Now, I know I make loads of these Frankie t-shirts, but I'm really happy with the pattern. And I had a piece of this fabric that I just wanted to make up into another uh, wearable t-shirt because it's absolutely gorgeous. So the fabric I picked up from Minerva Crafts and it is an art gallery fabric, which is their sort of standard jersey, which is a really nice quality jersey. I've had, um, actually I've had this print before in the different colourway that they did in the blue um, background but this is more of a greeny teal colour um, and actually if you look closely this um, is actually gold for the main majority of the print with a bit of pink um, and it is very slightly sparkly but not in your face sparkly just a little bit. Um, Again, really nice quality fabric. The inside is white, so it's printed on the one side rather than it being saturated right through. But it's not a problem for this t-shirt because none of the um, parts of the t-shirt are gonna show on the outside. You might have like a tie or something where both sides of the material would show. Um, the pattern I used is the Frankie t-shirt, which is the Tilly and the Buttons pattern, but I've modified the neckline um, to have the Agnes neckline. So this is an Agnes um, pattern t-shirt, also from Tilly and the Buttons, and I transferred the neckline from this t-shirt pattern onto the Frankie, because the Frankie was a really high neckline, and I wasn't happy with that for my, um, I just didn't like the feeling of it. So. Um, I transferred that onto there. I actually, I did do a video previously that showed um, how I made a sort of Disney themed um, Frankie t-shirt and I did this modification on that one as well in which I explained it more fully. So I'll put a link up there to that video if you wanted to hear more about the neck modification. But um, pretty much the rest of the t-shirt is pretty much how it is at the packet. Obviously I've picked my sizes that I normally do. I go for a smaller size on the shoulders uh, and then go wider for the bust and hips area. It's a really nice shaped t-shirt because it covers my bum a bit and it's not too tight at the front. It um, skims over the, the bits on the front of the tummy. <laughs> And I really like the raglan sleeves, it's easy to put together um, and I really like using my cover stitch machine for doing the hems because it really makes it nice and neat and that stretches out nicely as well. Um, just I just like doing this sort of sewing really even though it's really easy and I've made 10 tons of these before so I'm trying to sort of replace all my t-shirts that are shop bought with handmade ones so I'm getting there very slowly. To be honest, I think I'm nearly there now with tops anyway. I just have to concentrate on trousers and um, skirts and things that I need to replace in my wardrobe. But there we are. Thank you, Barbara. So I've been watching the British Sewing Bee, um, or the Great British Sewing Bee, I should say, and I've really been enjoying the first couple of episodes. I hope you've been able to watch it too. I really feel like I want to do more sewing now for dressmaking wise so hopefully this weekend I can make a few things. Um, I had an email from Minerva Crafts and they sort of listed some of the patterns that they sell from um, indie designers and I saw the Tarnia Colottes um, from what company was it? I've completely forgotten I'll have to look on my phone from Megan Nielsen Designs and I just thought they were absolutely gorgeous and I went over to the Megan, Megan Nielsen um, website and I saw that they actually do a curvy version as well so they go right up to a size 30 for those so I'm really excited to have a go so the Tanya Colots uh, basically just look like a skirt but brilliant because they're actually trousers that would be so convenient for me so I'm going to see if I can make those maybe I might have to be ordering some more fabric which is very naughty <laughs> although what I should do is Saturday I should make something out of my stash and then I'm allowed to buy another piece of fabric to make something in particular <laughs> um I think that's fair don't you so I quite fancy making those and I also saw that the fold line they were doing videos after each of the sewing bees episodes and the first one that she did she talked about the fjord skirt from um, closet case patterns and I thought that that was a really nice design as well so I'm very tempted to do that one I seem to have a lot of inspiration to do sort of skirt related things lately I should go with it when I've got a bit of inspiration really shouldn't I, <laughs> I just want to make all the things 
there's never enough time even when you're stuck in the house all the time <laughs> Um, I also looked up on making some scrubs for the NHS and I looked on the scrub hub which is um, basically a way of locating your local group um, which is in charge of making the scrubs and I saw that the Norfolk um, area was actually they'd got a lot of sewers already so what I did was I found a link that you could actually donate money to them for them to purchase fabrics um, because they've got a lot of people making them already so um, I used that link to go and donate some money for them to be able to pick up the fabric because it costs about £15 to get the poly cotton material for one set of scrubs so I thought that that was a nice idea rather than um, sort of messaging them and um, wasting in their time when they've got plenty of people sewing already so do go and have a look at the scrub hub if you are in the UK there might be something similar if you're in other countries but it's a great way of seeing um, who's organizing what and you know that it's the official place where you know um, to get the patterns and know what materials to use I know that um, in some areas they're getting people to you to make the, um, the, the hats that are part of the scrubs as well and all sorts of things so do go and have a look on websites like that I did see that so over it had a video video um, showing you how they make the scrubs as well which I thought was quite useful so if you are making scrubs for your area um, do go on to there and have a look I'll leave links below to anything that I found that I think you'd find quite useful as well so we have the confession section next and there are a few things that I've purchased <laughs> So, because I've been getting into English paper piecing a bit more, I thought that I'd, well, I'd seen Emma on the vintage sewing box um, with these really cute little clips. So they're mini wonder clips. So I normally use the standard ones with normal sewing, but with the smaller hexagons, I just thought, how cute are these tiny little clips? So this is the normal size wonder clip compared to the tiny ones that I've just bought. How cute are those? So there is a tiny little area to grip onto your English paper piece in with. So if you look at the size of these little squares, and I'd like to do some smaller ones than this as well, they're ideal for clipping things together. And turquoise. Ah! So these are made by Clover and they come in a little box like this um, and I think there's 50 in the box yeah 50 in the box and you've got five different colours so there must be 10 each um, so there's purple turquoise yellow and green as well as the red ones so you can coordinate with your project so I thought I need these <laughs> I picked these up from Amazon and I'll leave a link um, in the down box to those as well. I haven't used them yet because I hadn't done any paper piecing since last weekend. I also picked up some rulers. So I've been watching Liz Sews and she does a lot of underwear making and she's talking about drafting um, an underwear pattern, knickers pattern. And I just saw these rulers and I thought I need to draft my own underwear pattern too. And I need these rulers. So they're clover and they're called curve rulers with a mini ruler. And it comes in this little plastic envelope here. And you get three rulers in the packet. Um, and you get three different shapes. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to see this. It might be easier if I put it up against something. So if I use my notepad, hopefully you'll be able to sort of see. But it's like a curved ruler that's ideal for waistlines. Um, for making modifications to waistlines, especially with underwear. But also trousers and things as well. And there was this other shaped one that came with it they're good quality quite thick plastic and a tiny little ruler um, that will be very useful for making making modifications to patterns as well so i saw those and i had to buy them <laughs> so liz so does some lovely little video tutorials on how to do bra making and underwear making that uh, i've been watching lately and i keep thinking i really need to make um these things that she's doing as well but how do i get i need more time i need more time to do all these things <laughs> so these go back in the lovely little packet so that's my second purchase. I also purchased something else. So I've been watching Davina from the Little Workroom Crafts podcast. She got me onto the Vintage Sewing Box website um, to do the English paper piecing. And she did, um, and Davina did a nice little tutorial as well um, on English paper piecing. And she was saying about this needle threader. So this is a clover needle threader. And you basically um, 
put the needle in this little hole at the top there, put the thread across um, here, press this little button and it threads it. And this one is much better than the one I had before. So I've got one that I picked up from the Knitting and Stitching Show, which I've had ages, which looks like this. Um, this one, to be honest, works fine for needles that aren't really fine. <laughs> Overuse of the word fine. <laughs> but I found that with the size 10 milliners needles that I use for the English paper piecing, this one is much better. This threads every time. This one just doesn't seem to want to thread the smaller needles, even though there's, there's one end that does the fine ones and one that does the, um, I think this end slightly bigger needles this end for smaller needles but it doesn't work as well as this one in my opinion and I picked this up from Amazon as well um, but oh it's just so much easier than having to sometimes when you're a bit tired and you cannot be bothered to try threading a needle by hand absolutely brilliant and if you've got it it just makes life so much quicker and easier when you're doing hand sewing <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so pleased I bought this and I'm actually this is not only a confession but a gadget as well so this is my favorite gadget for this week or this month I should say um, so I definitely recommend getting one of these and thank you so much to Davina for recommending it to me you can get three different colors I think they do purple and blue maybe as well as the pink this is the pink one but I absolutely love this definitely recommend it I think we've just got one section left of the podcast I've got my shop update so the shop update will be this evening the 1st of May at 7 p.m. and I've got a new set of bags to go in the shop so it, I've got some more batik I do love a batik and it's like a pink and blue print really pretty I should really put some yarn in this bag so that you can see the shape of it properly so I'll use some of the yarn that I'm using for my um, jigsaw puzzle project so there we are it's got a nice box bottom this one is drawstring but I do do zipped versions if you want them basically the zipped version is the same height but with just the zip on the top this is a medium sized bag but I also do smaller and larger ones as well which I make to order um, it's got some lovely um, lilac lining and you can see my stamp in there with two nice big pockets um, oh, I just love this fabric. I've also got the other things that go with the set. So I do a notions pouch as well with the same lining with a little bit of um, gross grain ribbon for the zipper. I have a DPN case to keep your double pointed needles in but you can also use these for circulars. I have a circular needle case that I designed and I'll pop a link up there of the little video I show how to use them in the same fabric a scissor case um, I normally give the option to do um, you can order a pair of scissors a needle and some st stitch markers or bulb pins um, to go with these sets as like a kit um, but I've run out of the scissors at the moment but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some in the next few days um, I have ordered some so hopefully they're, they're on their way and again if you order a bag that I normally do a little lavender pouch to go with that as well so that's another nice little set Ta -da! so oh I, what I also wanted to mention is that um I've actually updated my um shipping details on my website so on the menu on the left hand side you can click shipping and delivery and then it actually gives you a rundown of the costs um per weight of the um parcels to different countries so there's one section for uk europe um usa and canada and then one for the rest of the world um and I've then given you an idea of how much like one skein of yarn weighs when you've got it all packaged up so it's about 150 grams um, and then also for something like a bag as well so that gives you an idea of how much things will cost unfortunately I can't work out a way of how to convert the currency but it's all in British pounds sterling I'm afraid at the moment but if you do go to um, Google you can do a conversion to get an idea of how much it would be so that's it really so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!